Hello everybody, it's time to take a look at the latest incarnation of Stephen King's It, directed by Andy Muschietti and starring Bill Skarsgård as that creepy friggin' clown. This, of course, is the coming-of-age story of a group of young outcasts, the self-proclaimed Losers Club, and their various encounters with the assholes that reside in the town of Derry, and there are many, and also the murderous supernatural being that often manifests itself as Pennywise the Dancing Clown. And then it gets weird. So I suppose I should start by saying what I thought of the 1990 version of It, the TV miniseries, which I did not see in 1990 because I had a very sheltered childhood and there's no way my parents were going to let me watch that shit. So I was pretty well into adulthood when I finally saw it for the first time. And I thought it sucked. Maybe if I saw it back in 1990, I'd have a different opinion, but I did not like it. I liked Tim Curry. I thought he was good. But the rest of it, no. And I even went back and rewatched it recently, and still sucks. I know there's a lot of people out there that like this, and that's fine. More power to you. I did not like it, and I'm amazed at how much I didn't like it, considering the talent involved. This thing had a really good cast, but it just wasn't scary, and it felt way, way too long. So given that this was my primary experience with IT going into the new movie, my expectations were not all that high. And I was blown the fuck away. This was so well done and so fucking creepy. I'm not normally afraid of clowns, but Skarsgård may have just changed my mind with that one because his performance in this movie... <sighs> He did not try to copy Tim Curry, which I thought was a very wise move. Instead, he really just did his own thing, and it turned out pretty damn good. So now I expect we're going to get another round of debates on who the better clown is on this, along the same lines of Nicholson or Ledger. And the amazing thing is, I'm not so sure Pennywise is really the scariest character in this movie, because there are times when the human residents of Derry seem much scarier. This town has some psychopathic bullies and racists and pedophiles and also just your general run-of-the-mill assholes. And there are times when Pennywise doesn't really seem all that bad. All of these evil people in this town, with the possible exception of the bully's father, seem to get a kick out of targeting the good people in this town and just taking everything out on them. On the other hand, Pennywise really doesn't care if you're good, bad, neutral, whatever. He just kills indiscriminately. He's pretty much an equal opportunity murderer, and sometimes I wonder if he's really the main villain of this story. He's a villain, but is he the villain? And while Pennywise is a creepy bastard, I think probably the creepiest moment in this movie came from its youngest character. Jason Robert Scott, who plays little Georgie, when his brother sees him for the first time after he has died, and he just keeps repeating, you'll float too, you'll float too, you'll float too! Oh God, get the creepy child away from me! The movie does have a couple of jump scares, but for the most part, it just focuses on creeping you right the fuck out. And it's quite good at that. I will never look at red balloons the same way again. Now, unlike the 1990 version, which bounced back and forth between the kids and the adults a lot and felt a bit unfocused because of it, this movie focuses solely on the kids, which I thought was a very good decision and the movie is much better off for it. It is basically a coming-of-age story in a similar vein to, say, Stand By Me, but a lot creepier and a lot scarier. So, of course, they cast one of the kids from Stranger Things. And I am so jealous of that kid, because not only is he extremely talented and already rich and famous at such a young age, but his name is Finn Wolfhard, which is about the coolest name ever. All of the kids in the Losers Club are fantastic, for that matter. Their friendship and their interactions feel very genuine, and it is impossible not to root for them. 
And it's amazing how charming and lighthearted this movie can be when Pennywise isn't out there trying to kill everyone and the kids are just hanging out, having fun, saying the stupid shit that teenagers say. And it's just a very interesting contrast. And it really makes me wonder why so many movies have such a difficult time casting decent child actors. This movie has like 10 of them and they're all good. Can't be that hard. Also, unlike the 1990 version, they were not hampered by the standards of broadcast television, so they could go right for that R rating. And boy, do they ever. Not just, like, dropping a lot of F-bombs, although they do that too. Most of the characters in this movie are teenage boys, so yeah, there's gonna be plenty of F-bombs. But there's a lot of stuff that in the original was kinda hinted at or toned down because it was in primetime broadcast television, and here, it's just cranked up right to 11. The scene where Beverly is in her bathroom and blood just starts spewing out of the sink. In this version of the movie, it paints that entire bathroom, like every square inch of the walls, the floor, the ceiling, everything, it's just covered. Holy shit, that was creepy. And they do tease a sequel at the end. At the beginning of the movie, it's just called It, but at the end, they reveal it's actually It Chapter One, which got a hilarious reaction from one of the guys in my theater. He's like, there's more? Oh God, I'm not ready for this. Apparently that guy was quite freaked out. And considering how much money this thing has already made, I think it's a pretty safe bet that we are going to get chapter two. And I for one cannot wait. I enjoyed the hell out of this. And if you want to see a good horror movie done right, you should definitely check it out as well if you have not already done so. And that's all I have to say about it. So until next time, take care.